Hey everyone, today we're looking at the long run implications of fiscal policy. Last time we looked at what fiscal policy is, and now we want to look at what the implications are, especially related to government debt. When it comes to government debt, we talk about the budget balance, and that's the savings by the government. And we, we define government savings as taxes minus government spending minus transfer payments. And if we are collecting more in taxes than we spend in government spending and in transfer payments, then we have a budget surplus. And if we are taxing less than we spend on government services and goods and transfer payments, then we have what's known as a deficit. Continued deficits add up to equal the government's overall debt. There are lots of ways to view U.S. government debt, and uh, I'll put links to all of these videos in, um, in the description so you can catch them. But suffice it to say, U.S. government deficits and U.S. government debt, especially over the last several years, have been increasingly getting larger and larger and larger. So then the question is, are these deficits and is this cumulative debt a problem for the economy or not? If you go to a site like usdebtclock.org, you'll be able to watch the deficit and the debt just go up consistently um, at an astounding pace. Um, and that may appear to be a major problem for the economy. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. We'll talk about that in, that in a second. Primarily, we're talking here about public debt. There are debts that the government holds to individuals and institutions that it must pay back. And as of the reporting here, we have got $21 trillion in public debt in the United States. Typically, we will express GDP as, or debt as a percentage of GDP. So in today's world, it's about 122% of GDP. There is some debt held by the government and owed to itself. There is about seven to eight trillion dollars in government debt that the government has borrowed from Social Security and has to theoretically pay back to Social Security. The government can choose to pay it back or not, I suppose, if they want. We're focused mostly on public debt held by individuals and institutions. Now, debt is helpful in the sense that the government is able to provide goods and services in times of, of need. For example, when you had the COVID pandemic kick in and people were unable to go to work, having a program for the government to send cash to people to make up for lost income may have been, probably was, a good use of government debt. There was no government taxes being collected to pay for that program. They took on debt in order to do it. But there are some concerns related to government debt that make some folks choose to pause a little bit and say, is this government program that's causing more debt worth it or not? And again, the answer may be yes, the answer may be no, depending on the utility of the program. But these are sort of the common concerns that people have. One, debt can lead to a concept known as crowding out. In an, a situation of crowding out, the government's borrowing will impact the interest rate in the market, which can cause private investment to diminish from what it would have been if the government had not been borrowing money. Lower private investment does have an impact on long-run growth and therefore is a concern for some people when looking at government debt. Visually, what's happening is we take the loanable funds market and we assume that we are in, in equilibrium to start. And now the government's going to go ahead and increase its spending by some amount that's going to require it to borrow money out of the loanable funds market. And so the demand for loanable funds will shift to the right by the amount of increased government spending. That's going to cause the interest rate to rise from the previous interest rate to a higher interest rate, in this case, R1. When it goes up to R1, it's going to cause private investment to diminish. People are willing to borrow money as long as the rate of return is equal to or greater than the interest rate. And so there is a portion along the demand curve where projects made sense when the interest rate was R0 because the rate of return was equal to or greater than that lower interest rate. But now that the interest rate has risen, they, these projects are no longer profitable. The demand for loanable funds didn't increase because people thought they could make more money on, on projects. It's because the government needed the money. 
So private investment will shrink. It'll be at the level where the number um, amount of loanable funds is demanded at a rate of R1. So we would see that private investment shrinks. It was at Q0, now it's at QPS. So total loanable funds is increasing. The government, however, has taken over a portion. The government's portion of total borrowing is from QPS to Q1. The area of private loss is what's been squeezed out or crowded out. Is debt a problem? Other people say yes, because there's future financial pressure. There's a need to have to borrow to pay back the debt, which means that you either have to borrow more money to pay off the interest that you owe, or you have to raise taxes, which then defeats the purpose of having increased aggregate demand in the first place. So you're taking away funds for the future in order to pay for stuff now, and it can create the sort of vicious cycle of borrowing to pay back debt and having to borrow to pay back what you borrowed, and that is in and of itself a concern. How big a problem is it? How big a challenge is debt? Well, we look at the debt to GDP ratio to make that distinction or decision. A country's debt to GDP ratio is sort of a measure of its ability to pay back what it owes. If you're less than 100%, it means that if you took all of the money from the economy in a given year, then you could pay off all of your debt and have money left over. If it's more than 100%, it means that the value of all the goods and services created in your country in a given year is still not sufficient to pay back all that you owe. The higher the debt to GDP ratio, the more of a challenge debt can become. So if you look at the United States and France, who has the worst debt problem? Well, the United States has more total government debt than the French do. So one might say the U.S. has a worse situation. But the U.S.'s debt to GDP ratio is less than in France. So what we're saying is that the U.S. is better situated to be able to finance or pay off its debt than France is, even though the United States has far more money to pay back. There is something else to keep in mind when it comes to government debt and government spending, and that is implicit liabilities. Not everything that the government owes is on the books yet, because it's something I owe in the future. I don't owe it now, but I'm going to owe it sometime later, and so while it's not technically part of my debt, it's going to become a problem in the future, and it's probably something that I should keep in mind. For example, Medicare, Medicaid, and Social Security, which make up nearly 50% of total government spending in a given year, uh, are not necessarily adding to government debt right now, but we know that in the next 5, 10, or 15 years, we're going to have to spend even more on those programs than we currently are, and we don't have the money to pay for it, which means we're going to have to borrow more money into the future. So, yes, government debt is a certain level now. We can manage it now. But implicit liabilities in the future mean that it's going to be even more difficult to handle that debt later on. Visually, you can see that implicit liabilities are projected to increase as a percentage of GDP and as a total amount uh, well into the future. So therefore, it is a concern that people have that while we might be able to handle our debt limit now or debt level now, in the future, it's going to get even more difficult to manage. Who does the government owe? Mostly uh, to U.S. individuals. We're not entirely owned by uh, China. In fact, the U.S. Federal Reserve owns a large portion of our overall debt as well. But we do owe significant amounts of money to other uh, investors and institutions in foreign countries. We'll talk more about the implications of government debt in class, work on some more problem sets, and I will see you then.